Hi folks, my name's Peter. For the last few years I spent a lot of my spare time after working on weekends trying to get my head around 3D art and game design. It's been a roller coaster ride of Dunning Kruger and exponentially decreasing eureka moments, headaches and happy accidents, pushing and pulling vertices until I fall asleep and start dreaming in 3D. I have gone down a lot of rabbit holes these last few years and come out of only some of them. Recently I've gone and dived into photogrammetry, the art of rebuilding 3D objects from 2D photos. After a couple of years of dabbling with it here and there on my phone, I took a leap of faith and invested in some equipment for photogrammetry. This video I'm going to show you today, it isn't a tutorial per se but more of a guide on the workflow that I found works for me. It's not the only way to go about it and definitely not the best, but it is a workflow that I can get my head around. In this video, I'll show you the steps I use to rebuild this pawpaw fruit you can see on the screen right now. Here you can see a time lapse of me taking photos of the fruit. First of all, I should explain the equipment that I'm using here. I'm using a Sony A6400 camera with a polarizing filter on its lens. And I'm also using a Godox AR400 ring flash with a polarizing filter as well. This creates an effect called cross polarization. I won't go into the details of this video, maybe another one, but what you need to know is that cross polarization removes reflections from photos to give a cleaner 3D scan. I'm also using a black backdrop and black fabric to make the object seem as if it's hanging in space. I use a narrow aperture on the camera of 11 or 13 and a fast shutter speed. I have the flash synchronized by a transmitter to the camera and I'm also using a wired remote to prevent camera shake. The reason you can only see the flash occasionally in this time lapse is that the flash happens much quicker than the frame rate in the time lapse. Um, I did try something weird at the end, it didn't quite work out, but um, yeah, that's that. And on to eating the fruit. So after taking the photos, you don't really want to waste the fruit. Now, this bottom part has been sitting on that velvet, so I don't really want to eat that. Plus it's a little bit colored, so it's a little bit bruised, but that was actually good for photogrammetry because you want the more details in the object, the better the software can help you along with the, the processing of the algorithm. So yeah, the better the better the process of the algorithm, or, or the better the more details on the object, the easier it is for photogrammetry software to process the image. But I don't want to waste this lovely paw paw, so I'm going to peel it. Might need to peel it with a knife and um, eat it for my for my snack. I'm hoping this one comes out all right. I'm still, I'm still really uh, coming to grips with the camera settings um, to get the best details. I'm not sure if I am um, using the best lens in the world because the lens I'm using, I think, is more. It's one of the Sigma art lenses. I don't think it's uh, meant for like high f-stops. It's more aimed at low f-stops to get you know bokeh and things like that. So. I might have to do some research into what lenses to use, but apart from that, uh, this is my workflow, and this is the break time snack uh, before I start processing the uh, the final results. Mm -mm. So the first step after taking the photos was I took them into Lightroom. You don't have to use Lightroom, there are open source alternatives and all sorts. And I did some light processing on the photos. I'm not sure if I had the object quite in focus. Initially, I did actually take a photo of just the of a color checker just with the gray scale to get the white balance correct. And then once I did develop the photos, I pulled up the texture a bit 
and I pulled up the clarity and I left everything else more or less the same. Um, I may have adjusted the curves, but then I exported them all as TIFFs and took them into Reality Capture. In Reality Capture, this is what you can see. You can see the two circles of cameras, one from above and one from below. Now this object was actually a little bit hard to get it to, to work, so I did have to make some control points on either side, choosing some different patterns on the on the object to, to get things working. This is not a tutorial, as I said before. Um, there are plenty of tutorials online on how to use reality capture, but this is the point cloud that I ended up with quite a lot of detail, quite high detailed. So that's the reality capture side of things. And once I got the object exported from Reality Capture, I took it into ZBrush. And you can actually see that the control points I used didn't quite align the mesh. You can see uh, there are some artifacts here. Not too much of a problem though. So what I did, uh, the reason I took it into ZBrush was mostly to retopologize it. But I made three subtitles. This is the one for the normals, and I actually smoothed this one out a little bit uh, once it was in ZBrush. I did do some initial smoothing in uh, Reality Capture, and then I did a little bit of extra smoothing in ZBrush. I made one for the normals, one for the detail, which is this one, um, which is a slightly edited version. Then I made a low poly. As you can see, the low poly does not have as much texture detail, but this is the one for UV unwrapping. So I think this ended up about 12,000 polygons. Um, and you can see I did actually paint it a little bit um, to try and maintain some of the details when I was using the remesh, uh, uh, Z remesher. And then finally, I just kept the original scan and all its glory. Um, with all of the artifacts not smoothed out as much um, for a color pass in Marmoset. So once I was done with that, I moved on to Marmoset. And once in Marmoset, we got our high poly and our low poly. And I used Marmoset for baking. So this is the high poly. So if we look at the vertex colors, it's exactly what we were seeing in Reality Capture in ZBrush. This is the one for the color. I don't have the one normal open, so you can actually see that there's these jaggy lines, but they were not uh, so prominent in the one that I uh, used for uh, baking the normal maps. So if we change, uh, this, this is the albedo color, and this is the vertex color. So the we can turn the high poly off and we can turn the low, low poly on and you can see it looks a lot cleaner. You can see some of that artifacting, but obviously you're not really going to be inspecting these objects too close up. Um, I hope I would do a better type job next time. So this is just the vertex colors baked in and the actually this is the vertex colors baked in and then i baked an ambient occlusion map and i baked an albedo map and then i went to photoshop and i made a roughness map from the albedo but that's not all i did with roughness but in photoshop i'll show you what i did so here in photoshop uh, i did some very simple uh, edits i um, added a huge saturation and I just removed the saturation till it was black and white. Control A and inverted, uh, or did I? Yes, I inverted it, I think, and no, I did not. And I added a curves and I basically just, my main goal with this was not really to get the full roughness map but just to get a little bit of detail on the seeds um, so this is not exactly what I did I believe I do have the uh, the roughness map yeah this is the roughness map that I ended up with so what I really wanted from this was to get a little bit of this detailing on the seeds so that the seeds were not uh, just plain black and the skin was a little bit less rough, some, I don't know, some, uh, it was a little bit more rough with some uh, shiny patches 
uh, here and there. And that's about it for the roughness map in Photoshop. And so I plugged that one back into Marmoset and you can see it here. So this is the basic roughness map off and on. So this is what it would have been originally. And then this is the roughness from Albedo. Now I wasn't quite happy with that because I did notice that there was more shininess around the edges. So the next step was I went into Substance Painter and took it from there and uh, I'll show you what I did there. So here we are in Substance Painter and I didn't do a lot. But this is the basic. I pulled in the maps from Marmoset, the ones that I baked, and you can see those applied here. Um, so this is the, the roughness, the ambient occlusion, and the uh, vertex colors that were baked into the UV map. Um, so you can see that I got some shine there and here and there, but I wasn't fully happy with uh, how dry the skin was looking. Um, so I did bake a couple of extra maps. Um, it's actually probably easier to turn the color on with these to see what I did. So this one was to add some additional roughness below the seeds so that they didn't all look um, so they didn't all look uh, shiny that whole area wasn't just shiny so there's that I did and then I added one more map and this one was mostly there we go around the edges like that so uh, what I actually did here was I used the curvature um, and if we look at the curvature and we if we turn off the slope blur and we turn the global balance up you can see what the curvature is so this is the curvature map and this just adds a little bit of extra shine uh, around a few different pockets and then when we blur it with a slope blur you can see it just makes it a little bit less consistent um, so we've got that and then once we turn off the color I feel like it gives it a little bit more depth and I didn't add any subsurface in substance um, I did do that in blender though so um, that's our next step and I did miss a step um, was that I actually UV unwrapped the uh, model the low poly model in blender so we'll move into blender now so now we're in blender and so this is what we've got in blender and there is actually a little bit of subsurface you probably can't tell um, maybe if I could go in cycles um, yeah you can tell so the subsurface is actually on the outer skin which it shouldn't be but it's not too much of an issue if we go into shading you can see what I did I made an AO blend just multiplying the ambient occlusion with the base color I used a mask map from I exported a mask map very simple I have the roughness and the well actually I exported a glossiness map and inverted it from the alpha channel and then I used the green channel for the AO there's no metallic in this so nothing more there I used a direct X normal so uh, I mean I used a uh, yeah direct X normal so I just invert that there and that's about it but I did multiply the color and the AO so we'll just go into here I did multiply the color and the AO with the subsurface so by a factor of 1.2 so if we pull this up you can see it adds more and more uh, subsurface um, nothing fancy but it just gives it a little bit of extra stonk as you can see it came out quite like Quite nice I'm really pleased with it I'm pleased with the colors I'm pleased with the the overall look yeah that's uh, basically it I did do a nice job of rendering it in cycles um, and I also did a nice job of rendering it in um, sketchfab so I'll show you the final result in sketchfab so this is the final result in sketchfab as you can see it's um, 
looking quite nice. Um, I did add a bit of subsurf, maybe a bit more than I should have, but um, I can obviously dial that back in later if I feel like it, but I think at the moment I quite enjoy the effects that it's giving. It looks more like the darker colors are beneath the uh, surface, uh, which is what it looks like in real life. So that's cool. And if we want to inspect the maps that I made, uh, this is it without post-processing, so I have a, put a sharpen filter on there. This is the base color, no metalness, roughness, as you can see, shiny, um, uh, shiny seeds and a little bit shinier around the edges and dark. I mean, it's not a pure PBR recreation because it's quite hard to like get that uh, specular data back in. There are ways to do it, which uh, I'm not too savvy with yet, but hopefully. Subsurfer is scattering, as you can see. I just put uh, that in the subsurface. Translucency is just a uh, flat color. Normal map, a bit bumpier than it, maybe it should be. Might need to dial that one back in. No emission, specular flat gray. That's the base mesh, the wireframe. So it's not really for a mobile game, but it definitely will be a great asset for the new uh, Unreal 5 engine with the Nanite LOD system. And then normals all look great. And the UV checker is, I mean, I cut it down the middle, but it's okay. It seems to work. So that's basically it, guys. Um, that's my workflow. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did you can show your support by leaving a like you can subscribe you can comment in the comments uh, good or bad um, I don't care uh, if you hated it let me know if you loved it let me know and if you really want to support me you can buy this uh, paw paw for $4.99 on Sketchfab uh, I also have an apple I made the other day and um, this was an earlier one. It's a very clean scan, but apples have lots of details, so um, it was quite quite easy, this one. And the wireframe on this one is um, also quite dense, but great for something like Nanite. And then um, another photo scan I did uh, in the last uh, week or so was this ornament. I was quite pleased with the results of this one, although I've, I think I would do a better job of it now. But this is a clay ornament um, that my mother gave me and it's uh, broken and um, I got quite a lot of details. I did actually need to go into ZBrush with the damn standard brush to uh, pull some of the detail back. Um, but luckily I had a reference in my hand that I could use. I also did this cricket ball download for free. Uh, this was another early attempt. Uh, I used a similar workflow to rebuild the roughness. So the, the roughness map on this one is uh, pretty, pretty good. Um, and that's something that I have sitting around at home as well. A month or two back, this is kind of what triggered my interest in photogrammetry again i scanned this sandwich now it's a bit of it's not the greatest scan but it looks like a sandwich and that kind of got me thinking and i went down the rabbit hole and and here we are so um i hope you enjoyed the uh video today leave a like comment subscribe and um if i get a good response i'll probably make another one